There's 35 employees working here full time. This is Manic 2, uh, one of five proposed uh, barrage in the Ma Manicouagan River. In the end, only four were built, even though one of them is called Manic 5. Uh, they built five, one, two, three, and the four was never built because the third made enough power. Bonjour from Quebec. In this video, we are going to visit three different hydroelectric landmark dams and power stations with a few extra surprises. Manic 5 is the biggest dam of its kind in the world. Tell us in the comment section below. We're releasing more travel videos like this. So remember, click subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. This is our original dam of some beavers. I'm really sorry. Sometimes I'm confused. And talk about hydroelectricity in Quebec and around the world. And this blocks about 215 kilometers north of big reservoir made by a meteorite more than 200 million years ago. This is Manic 5. Hi everybody, we're here at the dam of Manic 2, Becomo. This is part of the Quebec 2020 road trip, so make sure to subscribe for more travel videos. Fun fact is that Quebec uh, has 97% of electricity in the form of renewable hydroelectricity. It's one of the best places in the world for renewable. For instance, Germany is aiming to have 25% of renewable energy in 2025, and we're already at 97 since the 80s. This is one of the greatest natural research in Quebec, uh, hydropower, and we're very proud of it. We are here, unfortunately, unfortunately we couldn't visit uh, inside the dam uh, because they have a, they are complete to, for the season. They are open from June to August 31st, and everything is complete for Manic 2 and also Manic 5. So. You have the opportunity to come to the visit center where they have an interpretation center. Uh, you can, it's a little explanation on how it works. And also you have the opportunity to listen to an explanation about how the energy, the energy is created. We just had a half hour presentation by some Hydro-Quebec staff. Uh, there are seven people here in the summer that give some interpretation and guided tour. There is two parts to the visit. One is a theoretic uh, part, and the other one is the visit inside the building of the dam. 30 minutes presentation that very interesting, with a, lot, a lot of information. Uh, the guides here are very good. To, uh, they explain you very well how this works. They, in this uh, presentation, they talk about the history of the dam, how was this area what the, in the lake where they, where they built the dam, dam. Also, they explain very well how they built the dam, and then they explain the part where how the electricity is produced. It's very interesting. It was only built in six years. Uh, because it was done 12 months a year. They used to work uh, even in the winter and had some heaters to be able to construct at 10 degrees when the temperature was below zero. This installation was the biggest at its time and has only been surpassed uh, by the huge installation at Itaipu in Brazil uh, and at the border of Paraguay, uh, which is much bigger, it's the second biggest in the world. Uh, I, I had the chance to visit that one 
in 2008, uh, quite impressive. I think now the three dams in China is the biggest. Uh, but of this type, uh, there's only Itaipu in Brazil that's bigger than this. This does 1,200 and odd megawatts. More than one gigawatt. Capacity, and it has eight turbines. They have eight turbines, and two are the newer version of the Francis. This is one of the Francis turbines. It's five meter large and 2.2 meter of height and is made of real strong steel. This is how it works. It's a 57 ton turbine that have a turbine and an alternator. There are 35 people working here full time, someone here 24 seven. They used to manually adjust the turbine uh, speed so that we keep the 60 hertz that we have in North America. In Europe, it's 50. Uh, 60 hertz mean 60 times that the electron goes back and forth per second. On the right here, you can see the five um, flaps that are used in case there is too much water. Uh, this happened in 2018 when there was um, some flooding in the region and they had to open the valves. We try not to open the valves too often because we want all the water to go through the turbines to create electricity. These dams in the region account for 35% of all the electricity in Quebec. We have 8 million plus population and we also sell electricity to Ontario and to the United States. So that's a lot of electricity. 50% is made in the Beijing's uh, northwest region. We also visited LG2, Henri Bourassa Dam, which is huge and beautiful. Par la suite, toujours pour venir plonger le territoire ici, 
on, est, on a eu les glaciers, donc l'air glaciaire, et il y a 20 000 ans, les glaciers se sont mis à fondre. Tout d'abord, les glaciers nous ont laissé une vallée qui était en forme de V. Donc la vallée en forme de V, ici, ça nous permet de venir s'appuyer sur la montagne. On commence les travaux en 1959. La première chose qu'on fait, c'est qu'on va construire la route. Donc on commence la construction en 1962. Et euh, on monte le barrage, on bétonne le sillon avionnaire, ensuite on monte tranquillement, section par section. Ça va jusqu'en 1968, ça prend 6 ans pour construire le barrage comme on le connaît. Oui. is 215 meters high. Some of it is actually underground, so it's a bit cheating. Most of the electricity is sold here in Quebec and is the cheapest one in the world. This was a, a many years project, so the way Hydro-Québec uh, uh, motivated its worker was uh, making some activities for them, so they, they uh, build um, a ski station that they, uh, they can use anytime. They also had some places where uh, the workers can go hunt, um, school for, for the uh, kids uh, of the workers, uh, many other activities in the area. They are organized, they organize Olympic games for workers so they can Olympics between uh, competition between workers from many sank and uh, many the three best players in each category uh, got medals and yeah the, it was fun working here here is another dam in the region Utard Fort in the Utard River uh, Utard is a bird in French and this is a different type of dam you can see it's actually rocks lots of rocks on top of rocks that are blocking the river and electricity is built here at the central and going with the high tension lines right here so another set of uh, electrical power built in this area um that's about it see you soon we just came here it's the end of the road arriving at utard fort reservoir is in the back we're gonna try to find out if we can see the reservoir Mais quand même, là, à l'époque, on était le plus grand. Il est dit qu'il y a un contre-corps, et puis il y a le plus grand autre au monde. Donc, c'est nous qui l'avons ici à Malcom, je dirais qu'on en est à plus grand. On parle de 1314 mètres de gel. The turbine is. What? How big is the turbine? Okay. No. This is 57, the other one is 400. So the alternator. The uh, wheel is weighing over 400 tons and it turns at two uh, 30 minutes presentation where they talk about the history of the dam and then how the, the electricity is uh, uh, generated. So, come. This is the 10th, this is the 10th biggest electricity. Manic 5 is the biggest dam of its kind in the world. <laughs>